Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's me, Andrew here. I'm gonna do my full review on the all new late 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro. All right, let's get started. Hey, what's up YouTube? Let me go ahead and break down the product specifications for this late 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro high-end model. This laptop features an Intel Core i7-4850HQ quad-core processor running at 2.3 GHz with a turbo boost up to 3.5 GHz, 16 GB of DDR3 RAM, 512GB PCIe base flash storage. For the integrated graphics, you got the Intel Iris Pro graphics. And for the dedicated, you got the NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M with 2GB of GDDR5 memory with automatic graphics switching. This laptop features a 15.4 inch LED backlit display with IPS technology with a resolution of 2880 by 1800 which gives you 220 pixels per inch. This laptop also features 802.11ac wireless technology that's also backwards compatible with 802.11a, b, g, and n. Stereo speakers with dual microphones. Full-size backlit keyboard with an ambient light sensor. Full-size trackpad that supports multi-touch gestures. 720p FaceTime HD camera. For the OS, this laptop ships with Mac OS X Mavericks and the starting retail price of this laptop is $25.99. Alright, for this section, let's take a look at the connections and ports on the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Starting from the left, you got your MagSafe 2 charging port, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, USB 3.0 port, and a 3.5mm headset port. Alright, for the right side, let's take a look here. Starting from the right, you got USB 3.0 port, HDMI output, and your SDXC media card reader. And here goes the back side. Every port is the same as last year's model with the exception of the new Thunderbolt 2 connector which now gives you speeds of up to 20 gigabits a second. Next up let's take a look at the design and build quality of the new 15 inch MacBook Pro. The aluminum unibody construction design is beautiful. From the precision crafted aluminum to the drilled speaker holes, everything is crafted with an incredible level of detail. When it comes to design look no further than the new 15 inch MacBook Pro. I didn't find any issues with the build quality on this laptop. When you hold this laptop in your hands, you can definitely feel that it's one of the top premium laptops out there. Alright, let's test out the boot up speed on the new 15 inch MacBook Pro. Alright, here's the Apple logo. Still booting up. And boom, we're done. So 14.4 seconds, which is relatively fast for this computer. Alright, for this section let's talk about CPU performance. This laptop features the Intel i7-4850HQ Haswell processor running at 2.3 GHz with a turbo boost up to 3.5 GHz. This processor has been spectacular. It's taken everything I've thrown at it without even breaking a sweat. From regular tasks like web browsing with 20 tabs open to HD video streaming and editing, this computer ran like a champ. And to back that up, let's go ahead and take a look at some Geekbench 3 scores. This is a 64-bit version. For the single core score, you got 3,503, and for multi-core score, you got 13,529. Cinebench scores was also impressive. For the CPU, I got 610 CB. This section let's test out how well the new Haswell CPU can handle heat while put under pressure. To test that, I ran the CPU Cinebench test 10 times back to back. Alright, let's see how it fares. Alright, before the stress test, our CPU heatsink temperature was at 103 degrees. Alright, let's see what happens now. So after the CPU stress test, the CPU heatsink temperature is now at 121 degrees. Which is great considering how much of a breathing room this processor has inside this unibody enclosure. Alright, for this section let's test out the all new Intel Iris Pro graphics on the all new 15 inch MacBook Pro high end model. As well as the all new NVIDIA GT 750M with 2GB of GDDR5 memory. Alright, for the Intel Iris Pro graphics, Cinebench R15 reported 28 frames per second. This should be pretty similar on what you should expect on the baseline 15 inch MacBook Pro. Next up, for the Nvidia 750M, we got 54 frames per second, which is very impressive for this GPU. With the Nvidia 750M, you should be able to play many of today's top games on high settings without a problem. Alright, for this section, I'm going to perform a GPU stress test to check on how well this laptop handles temperature. To perform this test, I'm going to run Cinebench OpenGL 10 times back to back. Alright, let's see the results. So before the GPU stress test, the GPU temperature was 101 degrees with fans on average at about 2000 RPMs. So after the GPU stress test, the GPU temperature is now at about 157 degrees and while the bottom case is getting warm, you should not have to worry about it burning your lap. 
Battery performance has been excellent. While I didn't get anywhere near to Apple's claim of 8 hours, I did get roughly around 6.5 to 7.5 hours on a full charge with screen brightness at around 80%. I assume if you keep your brightness level down, you should be able to pull 8 hours out of a full charge. Make sure you're using Safari in order to achieve these times, as Safari has the all new power managed features to help improve battery performance. Next up is test the all new PCIe based flash storage system. The speeds have been spectacular. With write and read speeds at around 700 megabytes a second, everything feels very fast and responsive. Alright, next up let's talk about keyboard, trackpad, and speaker performance. The keyboard is very well spaced and comfortable to type on. However, it didn't feel as smooth to type on as the classic MacBook Pro. Trackpad has been flawless. Multi-touch gestures and two-finger scrolling while browsing the web was smooth as butter. Speaker performance has been amazing. These speakers had rich highs and lows. Mid-range was decent. Overall sound quality is excellent on this laptop. If you're coming from a classic MacBook Pro, you'll definitely see an improvement. Next up, let's test out the all-new 720p FaceTime HD camera. Apple is claiming an all-new image sensor, which improves low-light sensitivity and improved colors. Let's test it out. Let's test out the 720p quality. What's my fish tank? Alright, that does it for the video test on the computer. Next up, let's talk about this gorgeous, super high resolution retina display. This display has a resolution of 2880 by 1800. The display quality of this panel is breathtaking. Just take a look at this retina optimized wallpaper I have here. You can see a lot of details from these buildings. The colors and contrast is just as impressive. You've got to see this panel in person in order to appreciate the quality of this display. Alright, next up we're going to test out the viewing angles on this laptop. This laptop features an IPS display, so it should help out on the viewing angles. Let me go ahead and rotate to the left side. Impressive viewing angles. They're starting to blur out a little bit. Alright, let's rotate back to the center and let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. Let me make sure screen brightness is on 100%. Alright, let's go ahead and rotate to the right side now. Beautiful display. Alright, let's test out the viewing angles while tilting the display back. Alright, let's get started. There we go. That's at 100% right there, which is a decent viewing angle. Alright, for this section, let's talk about OS X Mavericks. OS X Mavericks is the latest operating system from Apple. As that many of you heard, it is now free to all Mac users from Snow Leopard and above. Now right, here goes your launchpad. Another way to access launchpad is grasping the trackpad with all five fingers. Next up, we got your Safari web browser. Apple is claiming this is the fastest and most power efficient web browser ever. Since we have this web page open, let me go ahead and test out the trackpad and scrolling performance. Overall, it feels very smooth and precise. Now, let me test out the multi touch. Very quick and responsive. Alright, let's go ahead and see what else is next here. Here we got the all new Maps application. Here you can send maps directly to your phone and browse them, etc. Supports multi touch, double tap, just like the iPhone. You also have the ability to use flyover as well as manage real time traffic information. Alright, next up you got your iMessage. You can send messages to iPad, iPod, iPhones, etc. Let's see what else is next. Alright, here you got your iBooks application. It's all new to Mac OS X Mavericks. Here you can organize your books, synchronize them through the iCloud based on the page you've left off. Apple is now claiming the iBook store now has over 2 million books to read, so there's something in here for everyone to read. Alright, let's see what else is next here. Uh, here you got your Mac App Store. Here you can access the iWork Suite, which is now free, just like the Mac OS X Mavericks. Next, I'd like to show you what happened overnight while I left the computer to sleep. When I woke up this morning, I tried to access the computer. The keyboard was unresponsive. Let me show you a sample here of what happened. Alright, here I'm trying to type in on my password, however the keys are unresponsive. But for some reason, the top row keys are working, like the brightness and the volume, etc. It also appears that I'm not the only one experiencing this issue. On the Apple Support Discussion Forum, there's a 61-page thread in regards to this issue. Hopefully it's just a bug with Mac OS X Mavericks, and it's not a hardware issue. If you're looking for the ultimate high-performance laptop that has an all-aluminum unibody enclosure with an awesome jaw-dropping retina display, as well as the latest Intel Haswell processors, 
that looked no further than the all-new 15-inch MacBook Pro. My only gripe was on the base 15-inch MacBook Pro. Why in the world would you remove a dedicated GPU? I know the Intel Iris Pro is vastly improved, but a 15-inch MacBook Pro should always have a dedicated GPU. For those of you that are not trying to spend $25.99, you can also save some money by buying last year's refurbished 15-inch MacBook Pro, which has a dedicated NVIDIA GT650M with 1GB of GDDR5 memory, and best of all, it's only $15.99. I'll leave a link in the description for more info. Alright, this completes my review on the all-new late 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button and please subscribe for more upcoming videos just like this one. Alright, thanks guys. Peace.